Recently, Electra Dashwood discovered she lacked enough structure in her life. It was making her days feel unsuccessful and stressful. Not only that, but she had her priorities way out of alignment. She would normally wake up and immediately dive into computer work since she worked from home, which only reinforced in her mind that her work was more important than herself. So she decided to make a change by implementing a new morning routine. Her object was to design one with correct priorities, but that was also flexible enough to make her feel secure without feeling trapped. Her routine became this. First, she would wake up and take care of herself physically, eat some breakfast, shower, and get dressed. Second, take care of her home. She would clean for an hour if she was feeling well, or do the basic chores like washing the dishes and scooping the cat litter if she was not feeling well. Third, eat lunch and rest after all of her hard work. As Ecclesiastes 4, 6 says, better is a handful of rest than two handfuls of hard work and chasing after the wind. After all of that, she would finally get to work. And it was absolutely a surprise to her that she felt so much more productive and her work came so much easier now that work was in its proper place. cats like this. <laughs> oh, actually, I'm kind of surprised that they haven't killed that bird before. This routine really worked for her. It reinforced in her mind that she was so much more of a priority than her work and also helped her feel loved and cared for by herself. It was just the right amount of structure to help her feel confident, but not confined. It really helped her see how changing even little habits, like what we prioritize first in a day, can have such a big impact on our mental health. Banana Mogoyo. So like I mentioned recently, I totally took down my old vision board and now it's just a mirror again. So I was thinking, and I have been thinking for a while, like what do I want on my vision board for next year? And I came to this big realization that I've kind of lost track of who I am. I went through this big period of burnout recently and I was just like, wow, like I A, let myself get this burnt out, but B, I felt like a lot of the burnout came from losing touch with myself. And so I've been really working on figuring out who I am again. And I think that's been part of why my vision board has been hard because I'm like, I don't want to commit to goals for the whole year when I don't even know what I want, right? But then I was realizing today, I was like, just put stuff you might want to try on the vision board. It's like exploration and learning and figuring out who I am again. I think that's the current era of life I'm in. So my vision board should reflect that, right? Yeah.
Okay, so I've discovered that I have two modes I want in next year. I'm not really sure how achievable either of these are. <laughs> I'm not sure why this is like what's going on my vision board so far. This is what we have. Apparently it's all about the rain. Being in the rain, raininess, rain plus flowers. Okay, that's like mood one. Second is flower cartoon plus cats. This is what I need in my life, guys. That. I'm not sure how to bring that into reality or what that means, but apparently that's my life goal. This is definitely my life goal. Also, doesn't that look just like my cat? He's so cute. But yeah, those are the two modes. That and that. <laughs> yeah, I'm not really as certain how this is descended into a mood board. But so far, that's what's happening. I think figuring out who I am and what I want out of life now is going to be a much longer process than I thought it would be. <laughs> but apparently whoever that is, it likes rain and cartoon flower cat Japan combos. So yeah. Which guys, on a totally different topic, guess what I finally watched? Wing Calls the Heart. Like the latest season that like came out last summer. Well, guys, guys, do you remember when I did like the big massive review of like a couple seasons ago, Wing Calls the Heart? That comment section was wild, guys. <laughs> so not trying to spark controversy, but like, yeah, I could tell a certain relationship was starting to fall apart like earlier in the this this season. So, but still, still, if you watch Wind Calls the Heart and you know what I'm talking about, let me know what you think down in the comments below because like, yeah. Though I have to say this too. I'm convinced that they, like, they, the writers of the show, watched my review of that past season because in it I specifically mentioned that, like, they never quote the Bible or scriptures, like, in the show. Like, they just never did. And it was always weird because it was always, like, vaguely Christian, only, like, they just would not commit. They wouldn't even say God half the time. It'd be, like, the man upstairs, you know? And it's, like, come on, guys. Like, choose like are you a christian show or are you not a christian show like either way like fine but like this like weird intermediary thing is not working this season i've noticed that they've been quoting the bible a lot and i'm like i'm sorry but they watched my review where i told them they needed to make up their mind anyway so i'm convinced they watched my review that and like several other things that i mentioned are like now getting addressed and i'm like Hmm. 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 I know it's all completely in my head that they watched the review, but that is what I think. get ready for bed at night sometimes like I need something there to distract me from the fact that I'm already too tired <laughs> so like I'll watch YouTube or whatever else but I've been really trying to not watch as many other creators because I think it's like muddling my own creative vision more like I still have like a few creators that I love and like you know have to watch their content but like I just don't like browse or watch random things as much anymore so last night I was like you know what I need to replace this with like a habit that will 
help me. And so I put on Masterclass. And I'm sure if you've been on the internet, you've seen ads for Masterclass. Well, like a couple of months ago, I was having insomnia in the middle of the night and like I got an ad for Masterclass and I'm like, this is what I need. So I like actually signed up for it. And guys, I really love it. Like I didn't think I would as much as I do, but the interesting thing about Masterclass, which is of course, it's like these courses being taught by different, mostly creative professionals. And it's very, very different from Skillshare, which is where you have people just like sharing a specific skill. Like, how do I explain this? Okay, so for example, on Skillshare, I learned how to draw flowers, which I am still very proud of my draw drawing flower ability. But on Masterclass, it's less about skills, even though the, the classes are supposed to be teaching you a skill. But like, honestly, what I find in the classes that's giving me the most value is just listening to these different people's take on creativity and work in general and like, the way they manage that and approach that like i feel like that's what's really inspiring and helping me and like helping me look at things from different perspectives or identify i would say like soft skills that i need to work on i guess that's the thing like skillshare is very much a hard skills platform so like you guys know that skillshare has sponsored several of my past videos and like it's always very much like, here's how you do this thing. Like I learned more about uh, color grading with them, drawing flowers, drawing chibi. It's like so many different like hard skills, but like masterclass I feel like is more like soft skills and like, this is how you approach creativity. This is how you approach, you know, business or teamwork or the, the big zoom out view of cinematography and what that means versus the actual like, here's the camera settings. It's more like, this is the vision. So like, of course not every class is as insightful, right? So I watched The Power of Personal Branding by Kris Jenner and I was like, it was like really, really basic. And I didn't feel like I was hearing so much her own personal insight into it as a lot of like business 101. If you picked up like a branding 101 book, like a lot of the stuff she covered would be in there. And yeah, it was lacking on insight, but overall, of course, it was a very professionally made class. And if you don't know Business 101, then yeah, it'd be a great one to take. And then I've also just like gone around to a, like a couple of different classes and watched like little snippets here and there. I watched one from Ron Howard, Martin Scorsese. Like, I think something I learned from both of theirs is like how much of, even they are like winging it. <laughs> Like, which of course, you know, sometimes you feel like everyone else has it figured out and then you're like, oh, these people are also just winging it. I think the my favorite class I've taken so far is The Power of Storytelling by LeVar Burton. Of course, like who does not want to listen to Jordy? Like I know everybody else is like, he's the reading rainbow guy, but I'm sorry. As a kid, I could not watch Reading Rainbow because I was so upset that he did not have his visor on. It like broke my little kid reality because like I grew up with him being Jordy LaForge, the chief engineer of the Starship Enterprise. So to see him on Reading Rainbow, I'm like, what is happening? Where's his visor? Anyway, so that's how I missed out on apparently a classic show I should have watched as a child because Star Trek came first. But his course, The Power of Storytelling was really, really interesting. It helped me get a lot of insight into storytelling in general and like myself as a person like I have been struggling with something like completely unrelated to the power of storytelling but like listening to him talk about his life I was like oh like it made me have like a breakthrough that like resolved this big issue which I know is entirely irrelevant to what the master class was supposed to be about but like you know he's just great and like I do think that the power of storytelling is so important and like all things. So epic class there. So last night, the class I watched is Amy Poehler's Prepared to be Unprepared, where she covers the principles of improv acting and applies them to like everyday life. And 
I found this class really, really helpful again. It, there's like certain soft skills I know that I struggle with. For example, one major giant one is the letting go of control. <laughs> I'm sure you guys have picked up on that. And just like, yeah. Anyway, the, but the principles of improv where like you kind of have to let go of control made me like spark a lot of thoughts in my head of like, oh, this is why I struggle with it. This is how I can do better. But it's also like making me want to do a bunch of like journaling and like brainstorming and like processing. I'm definitely someone who after getting a bunch of information has to like process it. So that's what I'm doing now. I'm like journaling kind of about like how I can apply what I learned in this class to my everyday life. Now this video is not sponsored by Masterclass, but of course I have an affiliate link for them, which means that I would earn a commission if you signed up for them through my link. This is actually a great way to support your favorite creators is actually clicking the links in our description if you're interested in trying out a product or buying anything we talk about because we earn commission off of them. Anyway, if you wanna try out Masterclass then definitely check out that link in my description below. And as always guys, thank you so much for your support. Now I need to journal.